Hello and welcome to today's podcast. I'm Paul Tunner, the founder of Pharma Forum. I'm pleased to introduce Niels Bottler, principal of Angelini Ventures. Niels, it's great to speak with you today. Um, where are you joining me from? Hi. Um, yeah, I'm joining from the heart of Berlin. Uh, I'm really lucky to work from my home office today, looking out the window and realizing it's not quite as gray and dark anymore as it used to be over the last couple of months and might be time for spring to come and get yeah. some light back in the city. We're definitely getting there, aren't we? There's signs that spring is in the air. So, I mean, let's start with a bit about the fund itself. Tell me a bit about the fund and and your role within the fund. Sure. Um, So before I go into the fund specifically, I would love to talk about Angelini a bit. So um, as you know, Angelini is a family owned and family run business. And the beauty of that is not only a strong dedication towards product and the choice of investment and the mission, but also a long-term commitment to innovation. Um, Our fund is part of a diversified group of companies with roots in pharma. And if you look at healthcare, a long-term view couldn't be more important as we ideally want to live long and healthy lives. Um, But this important leads to complex uh, in political and societal interests that translate to guidelines and regulation that really lengthen the process to bring innovation to market. Um, one quick example, maybe in Germany, uh, we have an electronic health record, an EHR, that was deemed to be a statutory health insurance benefit by the government in 2004. Yet, only in 2022, patients have been able to store and view certain information in their EHRs. And um, I read a statement recently that the path to a holistic EHR is still described as bumpy with a lot of patients required. Now that Angelini Ventures is structured as an evergreen fund with 300 million in commitments, we do take a long-term view on life science, biotech, and digital health investments. Um, and I joined as a principal focused on digital healthcare, so I'm scouting for bright minds that have launched interesting and innovative companies or are in the process of doing so, yeah. um, and that we can support with our knowledge network and funding. Yeah, fantastic. And that's a great point about the electronic health records because we do tend to see that technology is moving much quicker than the health systems can keep up with in in many, many different markets. We we may come back and touch on that later on. Before we dive into that, just interested to know how your career path has led you to Angelini Ventures, what you were doing before and what your journey has been. Yeah, so um, I guess I'm I'm a finance guy with somewhat of a contemporary worldview. Um, And let me tell you what I mean by that. Um, I started in investment banking, as most finance guys uh, do, um, and it actually teaches you a great foundation. Um, I did so at a boutique German private bank called Warburg, um, which has been around for 200 years and has a lot of history, takes a very traditional approach to banking and works with very traditional businesses. Um, I like working with various companies, but I wanted to see more innovation. Um, So I did an MBA, moved to Berlin, um, and realized to me innovation means to challenge the status quo with new ideas and with courage. And that's what really drives my motivation. Um, In Berlin, I joined uh, an innovation incubator of a media company. And media was actually one of the traditional businesses that was forced to really digitize uh, what they were doing. Um, Otherwise, they would have um, gotten... uh, made irrelevant and the space was vibrant, high pace and fun. Um, But after a few years, uh, I had the chance to form a corporate venture fund for a group of hospitals. And since then, I've really found my uh, home in healthcare investing because I saw such a difference between, you know, what was happening in the media industry and how fast this was happening and where healthcare was at the same time. I was with uh, with this group of hospitals for a short time, and after the fund had been um, uh, had been um, set up, uh, I joined a boutique investment firm named Think Health in the same space uh, that had invested successfully in ventures such as Urban Sports Club and uh, a distribution business for medical cannabis before medical cannabis became uh, a um, yeah widespread legally um, available in Germany. Um, And uh, the whole industry arose out of that with lots of hype. So I really liked that they were 
um, early in the process. Um, but instead of raising a large fund, we were focused on being entrepreneurially uh, an entrepreneurial investor uh, and involved with our companies. I took some operational roles uh, with a digital therapeutics company that we had and a brick and mortar practice operator, uh, which was great and valuable experience. But I really missed the inspiration I got from meeting with people with different innovative ideas and the ambition to bring them to market. Um, so when I got in touch with Angelini, it was a great match and uh, I'm really happy to be here now. Fantastic. What a great diverse background. I can see how all of that comes together in the work that you're doing now. Um, and anything beyond work? I always like to ask this. Anything beyond work? Any passions beyond work that you see have relevance to your work now? Um, sure. Uh, great question. Um, so I've been a passionate skier since I was a kid um, when I lived in Vancouver. Where I went to school and university, I would spend every weekend in Whistler, the local mountain training and racing. And a couple of years ago, I started surfing. Uh, and both are quite beneficial, I think, because it is important to switch off your mind sometimes. Yep. And really no better place to do so than in nature. Uh, both take you to beautiful places around the world. Um, yet the places you go to are very different. And in both, you have to focus 100% uh, on where you are and actually be in touch with nature, forget the system for a while. Um, and even if that means to sit on your surfboard for hours uh, to catch a perfect wave, um, and that exactly applies to uh, what we do professionally. We need patience, we need consistence um, uh, to find spectacular opportunities. Yeah, I love the analogy. And both obviously require good balance as well, which is quite a good skill for corporate life. It's true. Um, I've tried surfing and skiing. I'm terrible at both. So we won't, won't go into that in too much detail. Um, just to come back to the, the Angelini Ventures and what you're doing there, as you know, there's a number of corporate venture funds around. What is it that you think really makes Angelini different in that aspect? Yeah, and that was actually one of the questions um, that I had for the team very early on uh, in our initial discussions. And I think the structure is quite special. Uh, we're not part of Angelini Pharma or Fatter, the, uh, the consumer business, um, but we're part of the holding itself and have a very strong commitment from the management and with that from the family. Uh, our team reports directly to the CEO, Sergio Marullo de Condogliani, um, which uh, means we have really short communication paths and we can be quite quick in our decision making. Um, further, we have an advisory board that's made up of external industry experts, uh, which I think is also quite special for corporate VCs and an important factor to have that industry knowledge in there. Um, and yeah, the commitment, the quick decision making ability and this industry expertise uh, are very important in making us a competitive investor in the market. Fantastic. Yeah. And you know, we, we've spoken about your background and the diverse experience you've had. I've also seen that in some of your colleagues I've spoken to. So as you look at the team and the people that you're working with at Angelini Ventures, what is it you feel that you kind of really bring to the table there? Your, I guess your kind of unique expertise there. Um, yeah. So, I mean, healthcare investments is kind of a small bubble looking at a very huge and complex field. Um, and I've I'm super happy with sort of the team that uh, Paolo Di Giorgio, our CEO, has brought together. Um, everybody brings local knowledge uh, combined with a particular professional expertise and experience. So my part in that is uh, the German perspective and I think the financial and analytical background um, with some decent deal-making experience, a portfolio of over 15 companies in healthcare investments, and, um, you know, as my colleagues are located uh, in Rome, Milano, Singapore, Copenhagen and Boston, we all have this super strong local experience. Um, the markets are very different in every geography uh, and the team has, you know, strong uh, backgrounds that I have very little uh, knowledge in, such as medical, scientific uh, startup operations on the large scale and so on. Fantastic. And you mentioned a number of locations there. We are starting to travel a little bit more now in this, what I hope is a post-COVID period. Have you got a favorite place to go when you're not in Germany? Um, 
Yeah, so I, I love traveling. Uh, I've been all around. Um, skiing and surfing does give you quite a bit of a traveling map. I think our next trip, next trip is planned to be South Africa. Really uh -huh. looking forward to that. But if I had to pick a favorite, um, I think it would be a trip to Peru. Uh, my wife is from Peru and we discovered a really nice little place in the south, um, quite far away from where the normal traveling path would take you. Um, it's called Mancora, perfect little um, uh, surfing spot on the beach, lots of backpackers and quite a unique atmosphere. Sounds amazing. I've not been to Peru, but it's somewhere I'd love to go. It always looks looks fantastic. Just to bring us back to, to Germany and Berlin, you know, where you are now in the broader German ecosystem, it's been quite an interesting time, hasn't it, for startups and, and health tech innovation, quite a challenging market. But at the same time, my sense is that Germany's always been slightly ahead of the curve. So what do you see in terms of that startup environment within Germany and Berlin? Yeah, so, I mean, the German startup scene has developed very strongly over the last two decades, um, but it's also been driven by executional and operational excellence of business models that have been proven to work elsewhere. Um, and I have a feeling also now going to Italy, where the scene is just emerging, um, that in other geographies, there's more courage to really challenge the status quo and take bold and sometimes unpopular views. And I think a good example of that is actually looking at the traditional uh, German business of car manufacturers. Um, for years, they've been ridiculing Tesla for building an electric vehicle right. and instead bet on diesel, right? Diesel is proven, we can make it more efficient. And then all of a sudden, a huge scandal arose because they've lied about how efficient diesel is. And we kind of all know where that journey has taken us now and where Tesla is today. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, th I think there are great opportunities. Um, and of course, the fact that we're the first European country uh, to um, have a centralized reimbursement system for digital therapeutics um, is really good and yeah. has really sped up innovation in the digital health space. And I'm quite excited um, about that uh, to see how companies manage to reach scale and uh, build sustainable businesses. And a lot of things are happening um, and hopefully it won't be so much executional excellence, but also actual innovation. Yeah, no, great point. And, and that's part of why I say I think Germany's slightly ahead of the curve is because, you know, things like the DIGA reimbursement system hopefully is starting to really encourage more health tech to come through. And we'll see how that plays out. Um, but there's no doubt, you know, not just in Germany, but everywhere, there's a lot going on within the health tech space. And I guess part of your challenge is where do you focus your time? You know, where do you place your bets, if you like? So do you have a view on kind of how you see Angelini Ventures most making an impact in the next four to five years or so and where you see that impact? Yeah, so, I mean, the Angelini um, Pharma Group has focused on diseases of the central nervous system, um, which, uh, you know, is a, is a field that's been, I guess, a little underrepresented in terms of yeah. um, a yeah. lot has gone into, a lot of research has gone into oncology, um, but central nervous system diseases are very interesting and uh, uh, looking at how we can combine expertise in pharma and drug development, life sciences and biotech um, with digital is uh, very, uh, I think is where we can make a huge impact. Now, we recently closed an investment, and I actually don't know if it's public, so I won't say the name of the company, uh, but it is sort of a, um, you know, brain interface uh, with um, a software component and a med tech component, an implant uh, to uh, treat epilepsy. Epilepsy is one of the main fields of interest for Angelini Pharma, where, we, uh, where Angelini acquired a drug out of Switzerland uh, two years ago. So bringing all of that together, I believe, is where Angelini Ventures can make an impact both for the space of CNS and for the Angelini Group as, uh, as a whole, um, uh, enabling uh, digital and other means of uh, distributing and bringing uh, the pharma products to the market. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I think CNS is a particular hotbed 
within digital health and health technology alongside obviously you know tr traditional medicines so i guess you know within your typical working day or working week you're interacting with lots and lots of different staff at lots of companies we, we know from your background you would have seen many things what, what continues to inspire you within this work um i mean that's great about medicine tech uh, you're confronted with healthcare needs everywhere and all the time um, and you might know someone who suffers, you hear about new methods and you get a better understanding um, of what individualized and personalized uh, medicine looks like. And, uh, you, you know, I think how closely it touches all of our personal lives and how you can see the impact uh, in a positive way uh, really inspires me to keep going. Fantastic. And if we look at that kind of high level, I mean, there's so much going on within medicine, within digital, within health tech. Are there any emerging trends within healthcare or digital that you think are really interesting and worth following closely? Um, yeah. So I really like the idea of digital drugs. Um, you know, most digital therapeutics that we have today um, and that have clinical validation are digital forms of some therapy that has worked um, in the real life setting, such as cognitive behavioral therapy for most digital therapeutics that we have on the market. But research shows that there is more that we can do and actually treat um, through influencing our sensory organs in some sort of way. Uh, this could be audiophiles using beats uh, and sounds played at slightly different frequencies in each year mm -hmm. to induce a certain state of mind, relaxation, euphoria, uh, altered states of consciousness, um, and, you know, actually treat um, a, a certain indications similar to a, how a drug would do so. Yep. And I think, I mean, the path to market and clinical validation is a lot longer than taking cognitive behavioral therapy, but that is one of these emerging trends that I am really excited to take a look at in the future. Really interesting. Yeah. And as you know, I mean, there's so much going on within CBT, within digital health. But to your point, I think we're just starting to understand the impact of these kind of sensory applications. It'll be a fascinating field to follow. So let me bring you back to this year, because as we record this, we're almost at the end of February 2023. Any predictions specifically for this year that you're really excited about or things you think people should focus on? Um, I mean, with with uh, Angelini, uh, I'm here to invest in digital health. So I think digital health is something very interesting. Um, DIGA uh, uh, was introduced two years ago, yet no company has really managed to achieve significant scale. Um, I don't I don't think uh, that is a problem uh, of the system itself, but rather a challenge on um, how to tackle the market, how to best go to market. Uh, yeah. We'll definitely be taking a close look at some of the DIGA companies um, and new markets are becoming available uh, for digital therapeutics. Uh, COVID has sped everything up, but as we all know, it takes time for these things to um, become available on a wide scale. Uh, France uh, might be introducing their system for digital reimbursement this year. The US has done a lot, various states. Um, are including digital therapeutics in their Medicaid programs. Um, so uh, I think I think we've seen sort of a hype uh, over the last two years, which resulted in crazy valuations. Uh, now that has all come down to represent where the company actually stands in, in, in the market environment and in terms of scalability and revenues they can achieve. And uh, that might uh, lead to some good opportunities for investment now and actually scaling uh, digital therapeutic businesses and bringing them to a wider portion of the population. Yeah, that's a, that's a great observation. And as we touched on, I mean, the innovation is out there. And then in markets like Germany, you have the reimbursement system. You know, perhaps it's now about seeing that behavior change and this start to be embedded more within within health practice. That, that's a good ambition to hope for within 2023. Well, look, Niels, it's been fascinating speaking with you. Thank you so much for taking the time. And obviously wish you continued success in your work with Angelina Ventures. Thanks a lot, Paul. It was a pleasure speaking to you.